to be back in the house of the Lord this morning. I'm glad I'm able to be here. I'm glad to see each one here this morning and hope that we've come for the uh, right reason. I hope we come to serve the Lord and to uh, get a, a good feeding spiritually. Amen. And that we can go away and say that it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. I uh, have a little problem in my throat. I can't don't seem like it wants to clear up like it should, but anyway, y'all, just kind of bear with me if I have to cough every once in a while to try to get it going. But we want to study some this morning in the book of Luke, in the 17th chapter of the book of Luke, where we'll be reading some from, and then we're going to go to a <coughs> Matthew and read a little bit there. It's all goes according to the way I've got it lined out. But we want to talk to you a little bit this morning and read some to you in the Word of God about a thin or trespass. And uh, here in chapter 17 of the book of Luke, in verse 1, Then said unto his disciples, It is impossible, and notice that word, it is impossible, but that the offense will come. And so this morning, Christians, uh, you're going to be offended. You're going to be offended because... And I'm not saying that I'm going to offend you, but you're going to be offended as you uh, live on this earth because uh, the scripture says it's impossible, but that offense will come. And we know this morning that not only sinners offend Christians, but also that Christians offend of Christians. And so here's the thing that we're, we should be more interested in this morning is Christians offending Christians. And a lot of times it's done intentionally. A lot of times it's done unintentionally. Mm -hmm. And there is a responsibility of the offender and of the one that offends. Mm -hmm. There is a responsibility for both of us. And if we, uh, if we love the Lord and if we love the brothers and sisters, we'll want to do what's right if we offend or if we are offended. So we, this is what we want to look at this morning. So he says in verse 2, <clears throat> it were better, uh, it, uh, well, we'll read the last part of this, but woe unto him in verse 1, woe unto him through whom they come. And he's talking about the offenses, and he's talking about woe unto them. And, of course, it could be a sinner offending a, a Christian or a Christian offending a, a Christian. But he said woe to them. And, of course, the woe carries the meaning of, I believe, you watch it, you look out because you're you're in the wrong spirit, you're in the wrong way when you intentionally offend a brother. So here's what he says. It were better for him that a millstone were hang about his neck and he cast into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Well, now, <clears throat> right off the hand, people jump to this little one as little children. Well, that's not what he's talking about. Right. That's not what he's talking about. And we want to look over at Matthew in just a minute. And I'll, I'll, it'll clear it up just a little bit more. But in Matthew 18 and verse 1. <clears throat> Matthew verse eight, uh, chapter 18, I'm sorry, chapter 18 and verse 1. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus in the kingdom uh, and came the came, let me start again, at the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And he, and Jesus called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them. Now, from that, we, we, we see, we would think that this little one is a little child, a little, uh, a small child. Notice what it continues to say. Except you be converted and become as little children. So there's a two thing here. Now he's saying he's using the little children is because that a little child is more humble and he's he's more respectful to a grown person than a grown person is to a grown person. Right. He's using that little children, but there is a added thing here that we must understand that a little child, and he says, become as a little child and be converted. So salvation is involved in this 
little child bit, and that's talking then about a person that has come to the age that they understand right from wrong. It's not only uh, a, a six or seven year old child, but it is a grown person. And he refers to them because he says here, uh, and, and, and Jesus called a little child unto them and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. And so there is a thing with a saved person. They have to have an attitude adjustment also. Uh, that's, that's one of the things this morning that is necessary for a Christian to walk close to the Lord is to have the right attitude towards the Lord Jesus Christ himself and to have an attitude towards his brother and sister. Amen. And he needs to realize that his brother and his sister is just like he is. They are robed with a sinful robe of flesh and they have the tendency to say things that offends. And here is the thing of it. We need there is some measures, there is some steps that we need to take when we are offended or when we offend. Now notice, and back in our lesson in, uh, in uh, Luke 17, uh, 3, he says, Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. Amen. Now this rebuke is not getting down his throat and standing on your hands and looking down at him and telling him what a low down rascal he is because he said this to you. There is a way to tell a person the truth and to tell him in the right manner. And this, I believe, is what some, so many people misunderstand, again, this rebuke. And, of course, you know, uh, Christ uh, rebukes us through the Holy Spirit. And you and I know how that works. The Holy Spirit does not come to me and to you and tell you what ungodly, how low down you are. But He mildly speaks to your heart and reminds you of the thing that you've done and what the Bible says about it. Mm -hmm. And He can do it in a way that is very, very gentle, but it will tear you all to pieces. And that is a rebuke. Mm -hmm. And that is our guidelines in trying to tell someone, hey, you hurt my feelings, or you sinned against me, or you just offended me in some way. Now this, this trespassing carries the meaning of sin. And, and also, I'm, I'm thinking that offense does too. But here is the thing of it. We need to understand there's two things. If I'm, if I'm offended, it's my duty to go to the brother and to tell him about this. Now, there's another thing if he don't accept it. And if he uh, keeps on with a haughty type thing or whatever, we then get someone, a brother or sister, to go with us and to tell him again. And then if that doesn't work, we tell it to the church. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. What we do, what, where we mess up so much is, well, maybe he didn't know what he was talking about. Maybe uh, uh, he'll, he'll, he'll remember it or say something. But here's the thing. If we don't remind him, he may not know what he did. Right. Now, if we don't remind him and he don't have the opportunity to make it right, then he's carrying something on him, uh, even though maybe he didn't understand what he did, but he's going to have to stand before the Lord. Right. And, uh, and, and the Lord will remind him of it, but you that are standing there, you're the one that's guilty of it. Right. Because you didn't tell him. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's, it's a thing where, and, and, and the thing of it is, uh, we we hate to we hate to say well uh, brother so and so uh, you offended me or you said something wrong to me or you uh, I mean maybe I misunderstood it or could you clarify it? we don't like to do that because then we think that we make an enemy out of our, our brother or sister well if he's a true brother or a sister he ought to understand what God's word says 
And this morning, if if there is if this thing should happen in the near future or something like this, maybe this will be a help to the one that's offended or to the one that does the offensive. Mm -hmm. You see. So uh, this morning it was very clear to me how that I needed to teach this. And, and maybe in the near future, or it may never happen, but it may happen uh, outside the church. But the thing of it is, we <clears throat> will understand what our responsibility is. Mm -hmm. And that is if, you know, we, we should say something to him, or we, and listen, if he comes to you now, there's a thing here that we need to see. So in uh, verse two, uh, 4, uh, uh, in verse 3, the latter part, uh, he says, take, in verse 3, he says, take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. All right, we've got that settled. And if he repents, forgive him. Mm -hmm. Now, that's good if this just happens once. But what if he comes back 30 minutes later or an hour later or a, a, two hours later and does something just as bad, maybe something different, but he does it the same way? Well, what does he say here? And if he trespass against these seven times in a, in a day, and seven times in a day turns again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. Now, here's, 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 the, here's the flesh. Here's the flesh for you. You hypocrite. You know better than that. That's the flesh for you people. And that's where that the devil, that's where the devil gets his foothold in. And then he makes both of you enemies. But listen, you need to keep this, you need to keep this within yourself. Listen, hey, I do it all the time. I do it all the time. And I'm sorry, but I do it. And it's even with the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't serve him like I should. And listen, I have to come to him, and I have to come to him, and I have to come to him. Right. And I have to ask his forgiveness. And listen, when I come in the right way, he does not refuse me. Amen. He'll give me that peace of mind, and I, and I can go on my, my way. But now listen, this seven times is all, it, it is, it's hard to do, but I want to, I want to, if I, and, and, uh, <clears throat> in Matthew, back in Matthew 18, look at, look, in 18.1, <clears throat> in verse 21, notice what Peter asked the Lord, verse 8, in Matthew 18.21, then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him till seven times? Now Peter evidently heard what the Lord said about the seven times. Right. Or he had read it, or he knew it. But now what did the Lord say? Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee seven times, but until seventy times seven. Mm -hmm. Now people, uh, you know that sounds... That sounds bad. That sounds terrible again to the flesh. But you think about how many times and the Lord shed his blood on the cross of Calvary for you to make sure that you had a pardon for your sins. And we go out and we have all of this flesh to contend with. And this flesh just keeps on and keeps on. And our spirit has to apologize, has to try to get forgiveness for that sin. Because listen, the, the flesh does not care. Now, you can say what you will. The flesh is sorry that it did it. No, the, the flesh is not sorry. Because it's of the devil. It's a lost piece of human flesh. Mm -hmm. It's not saved. Amen. And it does even say what you want. And you can say, well, deep down in my heart, my body. But no, listen. There is a there is a, a sin there in your in your body that's not been forgiven. And it will not be forgiven until death does its thing. Until that flesh dies. And so 
we come, we go out and in and out and in in this world and we muck and we mar in it. And then we come home of a night, we lay down on the bed, and we get to thinking about it, and the Holy Spirit comes to us. There's that little mild rebuke. Mm -hmm. There's that little mild rebuke saying, hey, what did you do today? Should you have done this or shouldn't you have done that or whatever? Well, listen, it's the same thing over morning and night, middle of the day, we come right back to the Lord. And this is why I believe that he told Peter not seven times. Because listen, that would have put a limit. That would have put a limit on me coming to the Lord Jesus Christ and asking him to forgive me of my sins. Right. But 70 times seven, that's 400, nearly 500 times. And so listen, sometimes I, I think I go beyond that. But the thing of it is, what he is trying to tell Peter is, Peter, I'm always there ready to forgive my children of their sins. I'm always ready. If they come in the right way, if they uh, approach me in a forgiving manner, and like he spoke of as a little child, humbling yourself and fearing the, the God of, uh, of heaven, listen, I'll forgive their sins. I'll forgive them. And regardless if it's 20 times or if it's 60 times, if it's murder, if it's rape, or if it's cussing me. He said, even that, he said, but you know, you know, you, you, you can go to a certain extent and, and that's it. But the thing of it is, uh, we, blaspheme, we blaspheme God's name sometimes in a, in a manner sometimes that we don't even know what we're doing. Even in our old doubting, uh, ways we well maybe he will maybe he will listen there shouldn't be a maybe just like this woman down there in Florida there shouldn't be a maybe he'll heal him but he will heal her Man. And, and that's the same way with anything else that we look at we need to we have a we need to have a, 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 a attitude that Jesus will and listen I you know I'd be in, I'd be in a sad state of mind this morning if I thought that the Lord hadn't forgiven me for my sins, mm -hmm. I would be. And so this is this is some of the things here that uh, that uh, I want to uh, in in Matthew. Look in Matthew again in the sixth chapter. I'll read something to you here. <clears throat> just Matthew and six and uh, verse fourteen. Let's see what it says. Notice, in verse 14 it says, For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Amen. Now here's something that we need to study about. When we, when we get to the point when a brother comes back two or three times in a day and says, Hey, you know, I said this, or I did that, or I done something else, and I knew that it offended you, or I'm afraid it offended you. But notice, notice what he says. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. And so there is a thing put on us this morning that needs to encourage us and to guide us into forgiving one another of their trespasses and offenses against us. And to try to pray for them and as we pray, we ought to pray for ourselves that we don't offend our brothers and our sisters. Because that's, that's, that's something this morning sometimes that I'm sure I do, that I don't never realize that I do it. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I, I can say to anybody here this morning that if I have offended you and you haven't said anything about it, I'm sorry. Mm. And you can do the same to me. Right. And I can pray to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Help me. Help me not to do that again. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a serious thing this morning, offending, because there's so many things that it's connected to that. And uh, God is not pleased with us offending, but he's not pleased with us not 
letting others know that too. So it's it's a it's su- it's some things that we need to think about this morning. Now, <clears throat> back in our lesson in chapter seventeen, the book of Luke, uh, in verse uh, when well, we read it and. Uh, in verse 5, and the apostle said unto the Lord, increase our faith. Mm-hmm. Now that should be that should be our prayer this morning. That should be one of the things on our on our agenda this morning when we make our prayers known unto the Lord through the uh, through Jesus Christ. We need to ask the Lord to increase our faith. And uh, uh, how how do we need more faith? Well. One thing is, when we come to a brother and, and, he's, and, and he's rebuked us, and we need to say, well, hey, is there something that, that I can do to, to get this work? Or is when I hold something in my heart and say, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say anything about it. We need more faith in this. And it's, it's both ways. We need, we need to, uh, that faith to be stronger in us and realize, hey, if he's a true brother or a sister, listen, it won't make you mad. It, you know, and, and I know the flesh may boil up inside of him, but listen, the spirit of the, the Holy Spirit within will say, now hold on. Mm-hmm. What does God work say about it? And so, you know, that's that's it. You know, that's the way that it should be. Uh, and uh, when, you know, when a brother says, Hey, uh, I'm sorry that I offended you. Well, three days down the road, you see him go by there and say, well, I don't know if he meant it or not. Listen, hey, you know, what do you think about what the Lord Jesus says about you? Right. And you come to him and say, Lord, I'm sorry that I, I said those things or I did this or did that. Well, next time you come to him and say, Lord, I need your help. Well, I don't know if you're serious. I don't know if you're serious about this other thing. It's, it's you know, it, it, may, it may sound kind of crazy to talk like that, but listen, I believe it goes on. I believe the Lord, the Lord watches over us, and I believe the Lord hears our prayers. But again, when the, when the apostles here said, Lord, in, in, increase our faith, what was they talking about? We need more faith to speak to the Lord. We need our, more faith to be more uh, closer to the Lord, if you would, and, and be more sincere with the Lord. Man. So that's, that is that. Now notice, uh, and I want to read something to you in Colossians, if you would. Turn over to Colossians 2. together with him having forgiven you all trespasses Amen. blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us which was contrary to us and took it out of the way nailing it to the cross Amen. and so he took that with him to the cross that sin of unbelief, that sin that he uh, shed his blood for, that sin that the devil uh, involved Adam and Eve with, that sin that we inherited. And listen, we ask him to forgive us of that. He spoke to our hearts, he spoke to our souls, and we ask him to forgive us. And we, I hope, we all were sorry. And every day that I live, I'm still sorry. Mm-hmm. And every day I live, I realize what he did. Right. Every day that I live, I, I realize that how short I come. But he took that sin to the cross with him, and he nailed it to the cross. 
And he covered that sin with his blood. And it's no more. Amen. It's no more. And so what he did, what he does, he does permanently. And when we forgive a person, or if a person uh, asks us to forgive him, or if we uh, do something and ask the person to forgive us, listen, it ought to be a permanent thing. Mm -hmm. it, ought Amen. Be, it ought to be, hey, brother, I appreciate you telling me that. Brother, I appreciate you asking me to forgive you. And I ask, I appreciate you uh, 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 saying that you're sorry that you did what you did. It ought to be a permanent thing, and there should be never no more feelings of old haughtiness towards one another, but it should be pure love. And so uh, these are some of the things this morning that I, I see in uh, uh, a closer walk with the Lord and a closer walk with a brother and sister in, in Christ. I think this is, I think it's necessary to to forgive and to forget. Amen. Or to forgive anyway. The, the flesh won't let you forget, but to forgive them. And, and spiritually wise, forget it. And I know the flesh, I know what, how it works. And it, it, mine is no different from yours. And it always wants to bring that little incident back and say, yeah, but you remember what he did well. It's a sorry piece of flesh. That's all I can tell you it is. And we've got it. We're going to have to contend with it until it dies. And then this old spirit will be released. And we'll have to come up with it. Amen. But anyway, this is some of the things that uh, that I, I wanted to uh, talk to you about. And that's that's the lesson this morning. I hope that, it, that it's, uh, it will help you in days to come. Uh, and and uh, it will maybe keep the devil from catching you off guard because he likes to get you when you're tilted one way or the other and then that way it's easier for him to push you over and if you get my drift on that what, what I'm talking about he takes it he takes advantage of you Amen. every every time and and if you don't if you don't understand it read uh, when Jesus was in the wilderness and how that he come to him and said, if thou be, and as he was hungry, he said, can you make this stone bread and, and, and of these things. He catches you at your weakest point. And so uh, he's always there. Amen. He's always there. But you can, you can defeat him. You can defeat him. You have defeated him. You have defeated him. But each little incident, you can, uh, Protect yourself a little bit closer by uh, staying closer to the Lord, being, a, being aware of Him always. He's always there, ready to uh, interfere in your life and to tempt you and to uh, cause you problems. Amen. So that's my my lesson for the day, and I hope that each one that has heard it, each one that's seen it, will take heed. If you're a Christian, you need to practice it. If you're not a Christian, you need to respect the Christians and you need to pray to the Lord that the Lord save your soul. Amen. That's it. Thank you all for your attention. Mm -hmm.